Hello everyone, my name is Orhan Aryan. Today I prepared a topology and we will do something that's never done before I leave. I have with me two network engineers and I will open my topology and they will try to solve the network design issues and we will together solve this puzzle. Hi guys, welcome. Welcome, Hamid. Hi, Rohan. Thank you so much for your great session. Yeah, can we know you? Yes, uh, my name is Hamid. Uh, I'm working for California Telecom as a network consulting engineer. Okay. Uh, I, I already CCIE, I have two CCIE routing switching and data center and I'm trying to achieve my CCD. And it is about nine years that I'm working in a computer networking field. Okay, cool. Greg? Hi. Yeah. Uh, nice to meet you and also nice to meet you, Hamed. Uh, currently, I'm working as a network architect at IBM. Okay. Uh, I'm assigned to the Nordic accounts and resp I'm responsible for the all Nordic clients. I'm, design, I'm designing data centers um, day by day and also the one networks and PLS networks and everything related to the networking is, is on my hands. Okay. And I have about seven years experience cool. in networking me... and I'm also CCIE in routing switching. You have also CCIE. Let me, let me give uh, brief information about myself. I have CCIE also CCDE and we studied before with these two guys and I know they are capable and we will solve these issues, actually a uh, mini issue on this topology. If, I, if you are, guys are ready, I'll open the topology. Okay, yes, we are ready. <laughs> okay, here is the topology. Let me introduce the, this network to the audience and meanwhile by the way you guys also see first time this and you can listen to me meanwhile you can take a look what are the problems you can take your notes and then we will start to discuss we have a small enterprise company here and their campus network we will talk this campus network is highly critical for them to access to their data centers they have two data centers um, through this service provider network they are reaching and this is the just campus network for the simplicity just access uh, switches distribution switches and routers uh, I put here they have 50 data VLAN and 50 voice VLAN just one wireless LAN company has stackable access, uh, switches at the access layer multi-tenancy is not required maybe in the future at the distribution layer, they have Cisco 6500 switches and VSS deployed, virtual switching system. At the distribution layer, ports are highly available. Company's network engineer has not experience on OSPF. These all inputs will be important for you later, by the way. Okay, so, uh, Hamed attempted CCD, so he should be familiar with these questions. Backbone is, controlled. Yes. Backbone is controlled by the service providers. And this company complained from the spinning tree conversions. They had a problem. Last month also they had a big outage because of the SCP attack and now they are deploying first of security. And lastly, company wants to have end-to-end -end quality of service. They start to implement quality of service on their routers, as you seen from the picture, quality of service classification on the router interface. Now, we have access, distribution, and wider network router in this topology. That router is connected to PE. Stackable switches we have. Uh, sorry for, for my drawing, by the way. But we have two data VLAN in this topology for the simplicity, but they have totally 50 data VLAN, 50 voice VLAN, and one wireless LAN. That wireless LAN, as you see from the picture, is uh, stretched to the access switches, but they are using one data VLAN for just one access layer switch. And as you see from the picture, 
HSRP active for all the VLANs at left 6500 and standby for all VLAN at right 6500. Uh, 802.1D root switch for all VLANs right 6500 and left one secondary root for all the VLANs. Okay, who wants to start, guys? What do you see? You you will you will tell us. What do you see as a mistake have, in this topic? I have one question to you, Orkan. Yeah. Uh, so this 6500 work as VSS, right? Correct. So this red line between them... Ah, the, by the way, yeah. It's uh, layer 3 or layer yeah, 2? Yeah, uh, correct question. The blue line is layer 2. Red line mm -hmm. is layer 3 connection. Okay. So if I, I have another question. Uh, is there only two 6500 or four? Because you no. know what I see here in the topology, if it is a stack, uh -huh. so yeah. it doesn't mean the HSRP primary, HSRP active for some VLAN, HSRP standby. In a VSS scenario, we will not have HSRP. i just wondering. Maybe this is also a mistake, right? So you will, you will uh, tell, we have just two. Whatever you see in the picture, just we have. And the connections also like this. So. Uh, for the simplicity, I didn't draw only one link from access to distribution. We have really just one link there. So maybe this is also a problem, right? We okay, will... so we don't have... Uh, so it's not cross-connected. So the stack switches are not cross-connected to the 6500s, right? Is this a problem? Yeah, it should be a problem because 6500 is uh, in VSS work as one device. So one cable from one switch uh, should go to the one 6500 and second to the second. Okay, what do you think, Hamid? Well, uh, uh, the thing, I, I see a couple of single points of failure here. First, on our access level, if we start from access level, uh, as uh, he stated, uh, we are connected only to uh, one distribution layer okay. switch, so that's a single point of failure. Okay. Then the another issue that I see here is layer 2 is extended from distributed layer to the router that I believe, uh, you know, with the information that I see now, uh, it, it won't be a good to extend layer 2 up to the router. And so we can have a layer okay. three because this, this can cause because anyway you expect that end to end QoS and QoS classification and marking you are doing here so can that can cause a problem on QoS as yeah. well yeah and can another now? and then router to the PE again it's a, it's dual home to a single PE so again that's uh, I see a couple uh, I see a three PEs I don't know is there a possibility to use other PEs utilize them or not, but again, here at this point, if we are trying to achieve uh, redundancy, we can have another router and pair with another PE, so uh, we can have an end-to-end redundancy because as I see in the picture everywhere, we are uh, having a proper redundancy in the distribution. We have 26500 two and access stack switches. But the edge router is a single router that's connected to the to a single okay. PE. Okay. Okay. Can uh, in, my, I, in my I opinion, I think guys. that this layer two link between six five hundred and router is is not necessary, and we can easily use layer three and have layer three between six five hundred and router uh, two because uh, then we will have just layer two on the bottom from 6500 access and from 6500 to the router and up to the provider we will have layer 3 so it, it, it has very um, it has impact on the convergence, convergence Pro also probably you cannot hear me I am telling you, you I need to interrupt you guys okay uh, let's do like this so you found a mini mistake here right so let me draw for you what you suggest okay Okay, first, can you hear me, by the way? Yes. Okay, uh, what you say, at the stackable switches, you will, for the simplicity, just let's draw one switch. And what we need to do, for the 6500 connection, it should be, what, layer 2 or layer 3? From stack is layer 2, of course, but for... That's an ISO link. 
from stack six, uh, to 65 layer 2 and should it be like this right now it's connected to only one switch so it should be connected to this one you are saying yes okay and also port channel then yes of course so port how how we can do the port channel here on well, 500 and on stack switches right so what you suggest for that I would suggest because you know if we have three stack switches I don't know what type of switches they are right they work as one unit so the one unit should be a master and from this master we need to choose two ports and connect to 6500 and create port channel from it, from it. Uh, what do you think uh, Hamid from the master from that master is one physical switch should we go to the 6500 or no 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 not no, one no, no, master no, no. and slave right okay. but master so one leaks from master the second is from slave yes but we have three switches right so what about the third so you are saying actually this one this cable physically let's say assume the first switch is master it doesn't have to be a master by the way yeah. right but the second connection this way to another phys physical switch it might be also the third one or whatever based on the uh, bandwidth requirements but now what you suggest to complete the actual VSS what should we do between the 6500 well uh, I have another suggestion Orhan okay since there's a three switch I prefer to have uh, two link from each switch to each pair of uh, each uh, I mean switch uh, each member of VSS mm -hmm. okay it's uh, 6500 uh, so we would have totally six link which is going to that VSS from the stack switches you mean like this or actually no 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 no, no. no. cross connect from each switch yeah, to both of them You suggest this one. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you suggest this one. And if we, if we have... And then port channel H2. Port channel between the 6500s? Uh, I think it's created for, for the VSS, right? It's one port channel is dedicated for the VSS. Is this link? But guys, yes. is this link should yes. be layer two or layer three? Layer two, because we only have layer three, so we need both layer two and layer three. Well, we need a layer three for uh, dual active detection. Either we can use, uh, you know, we can already utilize the LACP or we can have a BFD based on the layer two link layer 3 link that you put between two 6500 do we need this layer 3 link between them yes we need yes. for dual active detection or um, dual active detection can be on layer 2 yes we can do that we can use a LACP with one of the port channel which is going to stack members yeah basically uh, we don't need to have actually layer 3 link there and we need to have layer 2 link not just because of VPC, complete, sorry, VSS, and also we have a requirement here. I gave you one requirement to actually that one wireless LAN needs to be stretched to the other access yes, layer step. Yes, exactly. Yes. Be, be, uh, without that layer 2 link, you have only one other option to, yes. to stretch that wireless LAN is just connect between layer two between the access layer switch okay yeah. would you do that actually yeah it, it could be uh, between sorry layer two link between the access layer switches it could be this one but i gave you another actually consideration here ports are highly available at the distribution layer if you are connecting layer two link between the access layer switches it's the reason it, it might be but the reason we have a problem, we have a port density problem on the distribution layer switch, so you don't cross-connect the 
uh, access layer to distribution. You connect them directly and you can keep, by the way, in this topology, you can keep layer 3 still between the distribution switches. Okay? But here, uh, we can do without this layer 3 link, just layer 2 between the 6500 distribution. Yeah. And then let's continue. What are the other problems? Uh, first of all, what is the reason of using IGRP in this topology? They, they choose to deploy EIGRP. Do you see problem? Yeah, I see problem because we need to do a distribution on the router itself to have reachability to the service provider from 6500. Okay, what should we do? Between between both protocols. So, What's your uh, I think the I think if we have OSPF to the service provider, right, and it, it, it's our, I would say it's company choice, so I don't see a problem to extend this OSPF up to 6500. So, okay. Uh, okay. What about uh, oh, Hamid? Do you see problem to extend that OSPF? Well, well uh, you know, I don't agree that because anyway, PE to C routing protocol, either, either this can be also a BGP that anyway you need to redistribute it with IGRP. And but so, here is OSPF, uh, right? Yeah, here is OSPF. But, uh, so anyway, P to C routing protocol. Anyway, what? Even you can use the OSPF, but I I don't prefer that. And also here, uh, he has specified that company network engineer has no experience on OSPF. Yes. Yes. So if we do redistribution okay. at the router that's there, because anyway we have to listen to the business requirement as well. Correct. So. Uh, that's why I say, I mean, having EIGRP doesn't create any problem here in the core. Okay. I don't, I don't say that it's a problem, right? But if you, will, of course, we have this limitation that network engineer doesn't have experience. But yes. if we will use SPF, we can, we can have much more uh, um, influence what we can do with the LSA up to the provider. From, from the distribution. So based on this requirement that, that the network engineer doesn't have experience, uh, we decline that. But from reality, I don't see a problem to extend to SPF up to, up to 6500. Okay, now let me uh, answer this part. Actually, Hamet answered uh, correctly. I gave a requirement there that company's network engineer has not experience on SPF. So it could be OSPF, SPEC, if the service provider allows you, okay? Some service provider just can give static route or BGP, as you know. Uh, but Dash, since they don't have experience on OSPF, and we may uh, want to choose EIGRP and, and from the PECE and also from the router to 6500, okay? Do you, do you see other problem there? Yeah, the layer 2 link between the router and 6500. What about it? Well, uh, you know, you know, because uh, I I believe this is not necessary. And, you know, because because if the 6500 is in a VSS, so what happens is this can have a layer 3 up to the router and we can port channel them. So we can have a layer 3 port channel and have a HSNC based on that port channel to the 6500. You mean here should be layer 3 and through port channel? To the 6500, right? Yes. Okay, then if you do the port channel and you if you put them as layer two port, layer 3 port channel, what will happen? Well, okay, the, the QoS classification, because by this point, what you want to do, uh, okay, just imagine that you convert another link to the layer 3. Uh, you have two interfaces that you need to do classification or marking uh, or whatever uh, QS policy you want to apply. But if you port channel them into a layer 3 port channel interface, there would, there would be a single interface that you are applying policies. Okay, so what you suggest for the quality of service policy here? So on the router, on the inside interface, okay. because it's we see that this engineer starts to, to provide QoS here, right? So on the inside interface on the port channel, do the marking, 
uh, of the traffic. Okay, and my answer will be quality of service classification uh, shouldn't be deployed there. Uh, classification should be uh, at the access layer. At the well, well, quality well, of well service, not well, what, I, what I said, the egress, no, the classification, the classification should happen at access layer as closest to the source. Yes. But there we can have queues. I mean, yeah, you know, I might use the wrong uh, word, so we can apply uh, egress queues to the LAN, you know, the traffic which is coming from the PE and going to the LAN, we can have an egress queue and ingress queue over there. Okay, if queuing will be, queuing will be on this direction, as egress, okay, sorry for yes. typing, egress on the router to there. But here I specifically said classification and classification should be uh, at access layer as close as possible to the source. Yes. Because the, uh, the access layer switches can class classify the packet at the hardware, but router will classify it at the software. So it will be a CPU process, CPU intensive process. So that's why for the classification you may want to do at the access layer if you can. And then marking, it might be at the inbound on this router and tuning also at the Yes, this is what I say to do marking. Address right. on the uh, router again. Uh, also ingress tuning can be done if you have head of line blocking, but let's not go there. Uh, if you have at the back plane, if you have over subscription, you may want to do ingress screening, but let's not go there. So, for the quality of service, we thought the place is probably wrong. We may want to choose it at the access layer. So, we also connect the router to the 6500 uh, through layer 3 links. And what we said is, since the company's engineer doesn't have OSPF experience, so we may want to choose EIGRP end to end from 6500 up to yeah. the PEs. Yes. But what about yes. router to PE? Uh, can should we connect directly to the one only one PE? Well, uh, I have a comment over here, Orhan. Yeah. About this edge router, uh, the thing is based on the QoS policy that we have with the carrier, with the service provider we might need to do remarking on this router as well uh, because uh, sometimes carriers are changing the DSCP values or you know the way that they hand off packets to the router so and our LAN might have a different QoS policy and different uh, values for uh, classifications so we might need uh, uh, remarking at that router as okay. well. Let me let me clarify that point. If the service provider at the MPLS their MPLS network doing the uniform mode MPLS, so they may uh, change our DHCP let's say from the data center at their core and then at their egress PE marking uh, might be changed. So we may as you said we may want to uh, reapply our marking as inbound on these routers, but uh, yeah, I believe this would be for this topology. We have much more problem actually, and let's try to find okay. those instead of going to more much more detail. And here, let me let me say you did, you guys didn't mention actually what we said. Com campus network here, campus network is highly critical for them to access to their data centers, right? If this campus network is highly critical... So we cannot have two links to one PE, right? Because if we lose this PE router, we lose connection to the data center. Correct. We need and, to have redundancy. And what else? What, uh, what I suggest is having another edge router over there and each one doll home to PEs. Correct. We don't need three PEs, we need two PEs. And to okay. each router, each one can be dual home to each provider. But for simplicity, I can say that we can pair with one PE uh, only, but uh, uh, two, two edge router is required. Yeah, because 
now we have two two single points of failure: the router, the edge company router, and PE router. So any any disruption of this of these two devices uh, will completely disconnect this this campus network from the data center. Correct. This this second router. This since the company uh, campus network is very critical for the entire business, we need to have this secondary router here. But I would also suggest to talk with the service provider and terminate them at the different PE routers on the service yes. provider. And the connection will be layer 3. Why this connection is layer 3? Because, uh, because the backbone is controlled by, yes. by a service provider. Backbone is controlled by the service provider. We can assume that they are doing MPLS layer 3 VPN. So we will use between the PECE uh, one of the protocol. It might be static route, IGP or even BGP, right? And that's why. Let me erase this marking here. And then what we said. Then I will take this red link from this one and I will connect to the second P, second router, second edge router, okay, as layer 3 again. And then what we did, we connected to the uh, two different service provider PE routers. Uh, we are okay uh, right now? But no, we need, we need at least connection between this edge router, this layer 3 connection between between these two routers, because if we'll do any summary network and uh, and stuff like that, we we can uh, have a black hole. So we need to have layer free link between them. Is it enough? Yes, absolutely correct. Is it enough? Uh, it's 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 okay, right? It depends on uh, how, uh, what type of links they are, right? If they are, right, I don't so. Uh, for example, fibers costly and let, then, then company don't want to uh, do more redundancy but the square is, is okay right for, for the layer free. Okay, let me let me then clarify that point as well it's not enough and uh, yes for, as you said this link for the some uh, some distribution to core link failure this link also will be necessary but as soon as possible as uh, whenever you can do, you should do actually the uh, triangle, not the square, and there is a reason for that. Yes. There is a yes. reason for that, right? It's what? based on the Cisco, right, box, but if, if you look on the reality and how what? much companies spend on, on additional links, if they are, for is example, it? for the uh, long distance. Okay, let me say, actually, this is, let, this is a company. Well, 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 this network. is a campus network, yeah. and I believe what Orhan says is, uh, you know, is uh, very valid for this scenario because I've seen this triangle scenario. I mean, in reality, triangle scenario is imp already implemented in most of enterprises. And this is campus network. The, uh, this link mm. is not long haul, actually. And the reason, biggest reason for doing this, actually, if you don't, if you have this. Probably now from this router to the both 6500 both distribution layers when you use the IGRP you will put both link into your routing plane routing table but mm -hmm. if you don't have this uh, cross connect and If you don't have this cross connect and this this link fails Okay, this link fails then routing needs to converge since this path Okay, let me draw with this different color. Since this path and this path from the router, if this link fails, this router will reach to the destination, to the access layer, through this one, right? To, through this path. You will not put probably that link into your routing table because it's not ECMP. And EIGRP can do unequivocal cost load balancing, but we need to specify it, not by default. Uh, that's why, actually, the routing will converge, okay, and it 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 means downtime. But if you have tooling into your routing table, if you connect this cross connect, and if it is the same bandwidth, 
uh, and de uh, delay for the EIGRP right, both attributes, both metric components will be taken into account. So you will put both links into your routing table and if this left link fails, then right is already in the routing table and forwarding table. Mm -hmm. So convergence will not be there. That's why you want to cross connect them. Okay? What about, what else? What do you see guys? This topology actually has many other issues. And what are those? I have a question about the DHCP attack. So yes. it's it's not clear from which I will say site it comes from from the service provider, from the data center, from the access layer. It's it's not it's not clear. DHCP attack from the service provider. It would be very unlikely, but uh, let me uh, it's say not it's not from service via service provider because this campus network is some connected to some other networks of company, right? So it's yeah, but it's uh, possible to 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 have uh, DHCP coming from other site as long as you as you use any relay stuff like that, right? Yeah, you so need to. You will need to have relay, I believe, to to the yes. target, to the attacker actually for that one. Uh, but let me clarify: it's it's that access layer. It's coming from the user on on this. Okay, campus. so then so the, the the easiest way be to configure the HCP snapping on six five hundred, and probably the six five hundred are also the HCP servers in this campus, right? Or or not? It might be at a different uh, place, maybe in the data center. What do you think, Hamid, or the uh, first top security features? Do you well, agree? as he as he, as he said, as he said, uh, the DHCP snooping is a very valid uh, option that we can use, uh, and also we can trust the DHCP server wherever it's uh, yeah. you know exist. I'm not sure because. In the, the, the information, I believe that the CCD exam is giving more information that you are giving or not. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I just missed <laughs> what you wrote I, here, but yeah. actually, based on the, um, I mean, uh, the, where the DHCP server is connected, we can protect the DHCP and, you know, we can forward DHCP request to that okay. server now, and we use. Like in the uh, CCD exam, I am sending an email to you guys now and I am giving the information now uh, actually DHCP let's say DHCP server is located in the data center okay okay what in data camp. here in this picture just uh, we have some problem actually for that one as well or maybe we don't maybe it's already deployed or whatever yeah just you should tell me okay it's it's correct because the one of the business requirement was this. What about uh, that one? Okay, let me clarify it. First of security, the I draw and here it seems implemented on the 6500, but for this DHCP snooping, RP source guard, ARP inspection. Should be on the switches itself, on, on the stack switches, on right? On the stack switches, right? I will deploy at the stack switches. The ACP, ARP inspection, source guard, whatever. On the first of uh, security features, on the first of access layer switches, I will. So that's why maybe not at the 6500, right? What about, what else? It's almost, it's almost okay. Uh, but what else? We don't have this link here. Do we care about spanning tree convergence? I think if we'll create the port channels, then we'll do uh, from the stack switches to six five and we discussed earlier with Hamad, we will not have spanning tree issues because every every two links will be treated as one from the VSS point of view. And I think it will eliminate the spanning tree convergence problem because no links will be blocked in the topology. So in this in this topology, since it is a VSS, we don't have any block link, right? 
Yeah. All, all those spinning trees still working as protection mechanism. We, we don't have actually the block link. But we have, you, you guys actually, I thought that you will you will directly see that point. But yeah, I see. We have 8 to 1D, so we need to change the spinning tree protocol to something different. Why? Uh, be because so 8 to 1D is because this, right? very bad convergence timers. Exactly. Right? The business requirement was they complain from spinning tree conversion. And if you need to use spinning tree still as a protection mechanism, as a backup protection mechanism, you want to use here RSTP for yes. the convergence. They, they are telling you, okay, they faced an issue, but uh, convergence was really bad, so you need to go and deploy RSTP. But you can al also deploy MST, right? MST, multiple spinning yes. tree, also has the same convergence numbers as RSTP. Why not MSTP? Uh, it depends on how the biggest uh, spanning tree domain will be, right? Because MS MST is, is, is a protocol to for, for example, if you want to, if you need to extend, I will say spanning tree because between data centers, but it, it's not a um, good, I will say, solution. Uh, then you probably use MST what right, do you think? for different Amen. domains. But it's only one campus, right? Hamid, what do you think? Uh, yes, actually, uh, in my point of view, as you stated here, there is uh, 50 data VLAN and 50 voice VLAN, so total is 100 VLAN. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I personally prefer that whenever the current routing, pro you know, there is no, um, I mean, the current protocol stack is capable to handle that. So it's not necessary to bring, uh, you know, MSD into the picture because uh, anyway, uh, RSTP uh, can, you know, handle it nicely without any problem. You know, the number of VLANs is not much to uh, create a separate, in a stand, a, I mean, merge them to a, a separate uh, a spanning tree instances. Yeah, correct. I agree. And uh, with the MST, maybe you can think that you need to configure more and management complexity, maybe. But uh, here I gave these VLAN numbers. We have 50, 50, 50 data, 50 voice, so, so totally 100 uh, VLANs. Uh, you may not need to configure MST, those regions, uh, versions, all those stuff, then binding VLAN to the regions, etc. RSTP would be good enough here. What, what else? Do you see any, any, any other problem here? Let's look. It's almost done, right? We also saw that the uh, 802.1D is a problem. There. I think I think the problem is uh, with active and standby for all the VLANs. We don't need this uh, HSRP, right? At all, because we have VSS. Yes, yes. I will not wait to say that. If we wouldn't have the VSS here, and we will normally, but why I wrote that one, just to explain this, this point. If we wouldn't have VSS here, and if we would have normal, uh, normal civil then deployment. We, but we have issue here, because some VLANs exist on one stack and some VLANs on the second, so it will be better to do load sharing via HSRP. So for, uh, I will say, 10 VLANs, uh, the left side uh, will be active, and for the... 20 VLANs the right side and uh, um, standby opposite, right? The, so yes, then we right. have some kind of tool chart. Right, but problem, yeah, you want to uh, traffic engineer the VLANs based on, and then you can use the both links as active. But here yeah. the point is, if you wouldn't have VSS and classical deployment, uh, and then with this topology, with this top, uh, triangle topology, you would have loop and spinning tree would kick in, one of the link would be blocked, right? And yes, yes. in that case, uh, for that block link, you will still use that link for the other set of VLAN as active, okay? And then you will, you will do traffic engineering. But here, still, uh, we will have a problem. Why? I say 
uh, for all VLANs, since first you want to distribute, if we have uh, totally 100 VLAN, 50 VLAN at, at the left distrib distribution, 6500 is active, 50 of them at the right distribution is active, you will want to use. But also we have another problem here. You, uh, let's say now for the 50 set of VLAN, this one active, HSRP primary, for the another 50 HSRP primary, this switch, also root switch for all VLANs, it says. Yeah, it, yeah. yes. Yeah, all, all VLAN, you, you don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. This is why, why I said to, 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 to not do that, right? So, I, when I'm talking about load sharing, it also means changing in a spanning tree itself, because... And for the best practice, let me say, uh, if you divide VLAN 1, 3, 5, and then 7, 9, whatever, to left distribution switch, and 2, 4, 6, and then 8, 10, 12 on the right distribution switch, for VLAN 1, 3, 5, if this one root switch, you want also this switch for those VLANs as HSRP primary. Yes. 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 For the other two, four, six, if you are the, doing this right also switch. Also primary. Also primary. As root switch, also HSRP primary for those VLANs. This, is, this will give you better troubleshoot. Also, you, you will have predictable topology. Uh, yeah. Everyone, fine. With that, right? Well, right. Uh, uh, as you said, based, based on the best practices, we should always keep the HSRP primary, the root switch yeah. of that VLAN. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you see another problem? Do you guys Let see another problem? I believe we are, we are almost there. This topology was really, um, you know, it was small, but I, I tried to include as many as possible mistakes. So do do we have do we have redistribution between ISPF processes on the edge router? Because I see two different ISPF processes. We we already changed it to the EIGRP. We already changed oh, okay. it to the EIGRP, right? Because the engineer doesn't have any experience with the OSPF. So we yeah, but I, I'm the looking on the provider side because you write on on, on the drawing. So yeah. it looks like one red link is SPF10 and the second red link is SPF10. Yeah, I, I, ju I just draw that one. Uh, you will tell, okay, if if we will use OSPF, then we want to choose just one OSPF process. I would want to say that, but then mm -hmm. we would continue. Since the company engineer doesn't have any experience with OSPF, we need to use that. Maybe it, it would be better. Or we, should, we need to send that guy to training. <laughs> then uh, it depends, right? So EIGRP and OSPF, if you will compare, compare those two protocols, I would say both of them are the same, almost, right? It's it, it's long, long discussion, but let's not go there. But here you would say OSPF 10 and 20. If you need to go with the OSPF in this topology, then you will... Uh, choose only one OSPF process, otherwise you, you would need to do road redistribution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, guys, I really uh, enjoyed <laughs> It was fun, and you guys did a great job, by the way. Uh, thanks for today coming here. Yeah. Thank you so much you. for this challenge. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.